cool. Alright, I, I'm pretty much, I think I'm ready to go. Let me make sure that everything's... I think we're good to go. Alright, I guess I'll just go ahead and get into the game. Let's just hope uh, that the audio doesn't load out in this. No, good, it's very cool. We do have a $20 donation from Spark Over. I'm not sure if this one was read yeah. yet. This was for my deaths in Mickey Mania. Thanks for the great marathon so far. Uh, and it will be going to the lit donation goal. Or. I just realized I don't have my uh, timer on. I'm gonna filter this up. Although I believe lid is actually being cut, so I guess Sparkover will put that donation elsewhere. I'm not sure what's going on with lit. It's either being cut or moved. Very tiny. Extremely tiny. There we go. I lost it somewhere. Alright. Oh, I wasn't quite ready. <laughs> <clears throat> so, everyone, welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is Ultima 6 for the PC. Uh, people who have seen my runs before know that I've done Ultima 6 uh, for the console before. <clears throat> this is an old, very old PC game from the 80s. <laughs> not, not exactly your standard JRPG style. It's very uh, open-ended RPG. You can go anywhere and do whatever you want, uh, which is very different than a lot of RPGs of the time. Sort of a precursor to the Skyrim type games, the Elder Scrolls series, for instance. All right, <clears throat> so it looks like, before you start the run, that the name the avatar uh, is, of course, Currently, Avatar for the first game. That's an incentive for all three games. Avatar is my uh, is named after my cat Ava, who recently passed away. So very sweet. Uh, I believe notes are ready. <clears throat> Dreams ready. All right, let's do this. Shall I count you off, or? Uh, whoa, whoa. We get into the correct screen. Also, because I have OBS running, I'm seeing duplicate. Like, this is driving me crazy, so I'm gonna minimize that. <laughs> I don't wanna see two screens. Uh, let me go ahead and create the character. We start at, uh, we start at 
when I click the continue button so you can count me off. All right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing we do is we have to create a character class. And we have very specific stats that we need for this run. So I'm going to be selecting options here. These questions are randomly selected uh, that give me the most strength value. Uh, there's a ranking system to which ones give you the most strength. So I will be selecting ones that give me the best options. Mostly Valor, which gives us three, uh, and Spirituality, which is going to give us uh, one of every stat, which is a really good thing. So, nope. This will set us up to have enough strength to deal with the rest of the run. Because I've got to carry everything. This is a game where you have a- oh no! <laughs> I forgot an option about Ultima 6! Oh no! Alright, I'll just start it again, but we'll keep the timer running. It won't take a second. <sighs> I, did so, I did a practice to make sure it works, which auto-creates a save game. This game can only have one save game. <laughs> Yes. Run it again. Won't take but a minute to get back. <laughs> ah, screams. DOS problems. There we go. So we're back here again. <clears throat> So, let's do this again. Yeah, Ultima 6 has an interesting, because it's a PC game before save games, well, during the time of save games, but they thought they'd be clever and try and make the player in this particular game play uh, only once, and that you couldn't just restart a game really easily. <clears throat> you have to literally reinstall the game to get to play a new game. So for us, that just means copying and pasting a 4 megabyte file. Uh, a huge pain back in the day. Now we're back on pace. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, break combat at the start here, and hold space, and then answer some security questions. Uh, these are also random. You only have to type the first four letters in of any given text. And, fun fact, you can have as many spaces as you want in front of the actual words. So, now we're going to go and do some party management. This is a super fun time. So the first thing we need to do is move all of our money to the avatar. Everybody, give me your money for no good reason. Also, give me your boat boots for no reason at all. There's absolutely no reason I'm going to take your boots or your weapons or your items. Uh, that's ridiculous. There's nothing gonna happen here. So I have those. I'm gonna put the boots on that I just got. Some sweet boots, dude. Thank you. I'm gonna position each of them in the lava uh, because they all like lava. They're very uh, fond of lava. There is, a, there is a category called any percent that you just talk to uh, YOLO. Uh, it's a really interesting category. So uh, now I release myself from the burden of the party members, which is uh, very good for us.
I'm gonna make sure to save often. These games are extremely prone to crashing, as well as any number of other issues. Uh, the party members actually cost us a total of 15% movement speed during the run. So we were going to not get those in our... We need those frames, like all 15% of them. It's a pretty significant downtime, if you think about it. You do not need to in this run, and you'll see why. They're just sleeping. They're sleeping on lava. So here, I'm going to talk to the mouse, Sherry, who we just got the cheese from. Or sorry, for the cheese for. I'm going to tell her we have some cheese and ask her to join my party. This is my first party member that's actually not dead. I know, that's quite shocking. As the avatar, oh my gosh, where are you, Sherry? Why did you go in the bedroom? The great thing about this game is you can command each of your members separately. So if one of them runs off, we can just go and gather them. There's a lot of little funness like that in this game. Drop some items, because we don't need anything. Equip some stuff too. Let me go and open this door. There's a child in here who has a room we need. We need eight rooms to complete the game to cleanse the eight shrines. I'm going to tell them that I don't have a name and then ask them about the room. They said that I need to go talk to their parents to get it. So I'm just going to lie to them and say that yes, I talked to them. So that was pretty cool. So we lie to a child. We murdered our teammates and lied to a child so far, uh, which is very virtuous. For anyone who doesn't know, the avatar is actually the warrior of virtue. You're supposed to represent all that's good in the world. Apparently, there's not much good in this world. The Ultima games. You actually play almost as a lackey to the main character, or one of the main characters, Lord British. So now I'm going to drop these items. There's a lot of management. Talk to the party member. We actually don't kill Sherry, thankfully. We just tell her to go away by being silent to her. It was, she gets kind of upset and gets the feeling that we're giving her the silent treatment, but you know. We have to be. We have to make sure we don't kill Sherry. We can't be that evil. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, wait until we get two more games in. <laughs> Things get uh, quite different. Alright, so over here, normally we would buy a boat, but I'm going to steal this uh, rope. Oh hey, this guy is like blocking our way. Uh, and then steal his boat too, so you know. We have a boat now, which is uh, very handy. He didn't need that boat anyway. So here we need to buy 25 spider silk, uh, because spider silk is amazing, and why do you not want spider silk? Uh, and we need to buy a spell, which is going to be the unlock spell. And I believe that is all we need here. I'm a little tired. <laughs> so forgive me if I'm a little uh, slow at the uptake here. And get this, and then we're gonna go to the Shrine of Spirituality. Hey. Shrine of Spirituality, my friend. Remember to tip your spiders. Exactly. Oh, we're gonna clean this shrine of spirituality. Wait, what? That's the right. That is indeed the right mantra. 
What? <laughs> I'm very confused. Oh no, that's not the right mantra. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. There's a lot to memorize in this run. <laughs> All right. So now we've done that, we're actually going to uh, warp down to a different place. So that gives us a moonstone. These are the eight shrines we have to claim. Most of them are actually surrounded by gargoyles, which we can't fight yet, especially solo. That's the only one that's not. But we can get that moonstone and abuse a warp system with it, which is what we're going to do. But first, I need some explosives. Who doesn't need explosives in their life? Well, here's the Rune of Honor. We're supposed to talk to the mayor to get, but we're just going to take it, because why would we? Why would we talk to somebody? It's a waste of time. I'm going to rob this person's place. Uh, pretty effective method of getting 600 gold and an extra invisibility ring. But we're just borrowing. Just don't worry, we're borrowing. We're, the, we're going to save the world. Why? Why do we have to report to anybody? Exactly! People are just leaving it out there. I'm gonna take it. So now, we get to do a cool warp. But the I'm guards up here are strangely okay with that kind of stealing, too. <laughs> Maybe they understand that you're off to save the world. I think after... The since this is the sixth game in the series, people in this universe may just be terrified of you. After the events of the last few games, you have literally culminated into destroying the world more than once. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be around you either if you were constantly blowing the world up and killing all your party members. I'd also be equally worried. So there we got the silk thread, we took the side spider silk and made spider silk thread. It's just an amazing use of spider silk. Of course we need some silk thread, but we're gonna make some rad clothes with that later. And that's just completely separate, we don't need that for the run, we just want some rad clothes. Who doesn't want rad clothes? So this person is another person that we buy um, spells from. There we go. Of all the spells we need for the game now, plenty of magic to cast them. Now we get to listen to Boat Song. This is literally the best part of the run, so uh, sit back and relax. Take a small break here. Didn't do it again. Boat song is uh, is by far the best. All rise for boat song. carry that boat with me. That's why I needed all that strength to be able to carry the boat and a ton of explosives. This is the Isle of Dr. Monroe basically, Sutek's castle in the game, in which there's a bunch of really strange creatures like these rabbits that just attack you. Uh, everything is aggressive here. So now we get to do the fort for the young. We get to actually use the casting system in this game where you type your spells. So if you, you can use the spell book, but if you have them all memorized, you don't actually have to ever use the spell book. You can just type your spells in. So I'm going to use this ring, and then cast Angra, and then we're going to murder this scorpion thing. Oh, 
There's a giant scorpion, but I question that. I don't know a lot of giant scorpions that have no tail and two bodies. Costa. Cost Explorer. Let's unlock spell. Oh, this alligator. Oh, hey, you moved. What? I'm very confused. Cost on Growl. Now we kill the alligator. It's in my way again. We actually can get through this entire run as a pacifist run, except for killing your party members and some townsfolk. But outside of just blatant murder of actual like NPCs, we can get through the run without killing anyone. Completely. This is what pacifist means, right? Didn't kill them. The lava did. It's true. I didn't kill the next person either. Other means did. I mean, they did it on their own volition. The avatar was just there. Rats in my way. And look here and get us some little plans. Then back here. Pretty sure. Yep. So now we have the balloon plans, which lets us make a balloon so we can achieve our dream of becoming a hot air balloonist. Is, you know, everyone's actual dream. So this guy uh, tells us that if we go drop some flowers on this person's grave, if we have the key to their tomb. That's cool. We're gonna take those flowers. And I'm gonna punch this barrel with some lightning. We actually will drop the flowers on the grave because we're such good people. You don't actually have to do that, by the way. If you're playing the game, you can just choose not to ever put those flowers there. But we'll be we'll 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 try and make some penance for murdering everybody. Good for the good luck. In fact, in the console version of the game, this is where we actually kill our party. Because party. it's faster to do here in that game. But this is where we get the Rune of Honesty. Which is pretty rad. No. Gonna warp off. Make sure I save the game often. I gotta remember that. This game is prone to bad stuff. Can we get some more boat song now. Alright, so I'd like to take a moment to talk about Take This, whose main mission is to inform the gaming community about mental health issues, provide education on disorders and coping techniques, and to reduce the overall stigma around mental illness. Thank you. This, this donation drive is a charity event. Very important. It's been amazing seeing all the work going into it. Absolutely astonishing. Everybody who has donated or been watching is greatly appreciated.
So that character uh, that we just talked to was uh, Captain John, who in the last game was the cause of uh, basically the bad guys that you have to kill at the end of the game, the Shadow Lords. He's hanging out in, like, inside a cave now. I thought is the final dungeon of the game. We just used the back entrance to you. And while there, he's been learning the gargoyle language. So we go to him to learn the language. Is this going to be important? Right, Eve. We cast help here. That resets the day. It's in the night or in the morning now. And we will be doing our last boat area. But before that, we have to get another rune, the rune of sacrifice. It's a ironic what is about to happen. I don't even know if that's the right usage of the word. So, I have this explosive barrel here. I'm just gonna put it right there. You can hang out with that, buddy. Alright, awesome. See? Nothing. He just- he didn't run. He had a plenty of opportunity. Now we have the Rune of Sacrifice. I appreciate your sacrifice for giving me that. Selgador. He had a name. We all must respect his name. She gives me the balloon basket. A lot of the questing here is like gathering parts to make the balloon. Actually, I just really like giant baskets. The avatar doesn't have a house, so they're just gonna go sleep with a giant basket. It's not true. We saw them in a house at the beginning of the game. So you actually are not from this world, interestingly enough. You are from Earth. And just like Lord British, you are the only Earthling outside of them. Lord British came to this place uh, and then claimed himself as king. And then uh, basically brought you here through his own magic. And then sort of forces you to be his lackey. You just like, he comes and like colonizes all of Britannia and then claims it as his and then uses you as his like first hand warrior. But if in the next run you would like Squibs to uh, take down Lord British, uh, we have an incentive to meet for that. It's true. We'd like to see Lord British die. We can do that. Can make that happen. It's currently at thirty dollars out of one hundred fifty dollars required, and that's during Ultima Seven: The Black Gate, which is immediately after this run. We are here now to get the Vortex Cube, which is this nice magical like black cube box. Actually, we're just here to use more explosives. Which apparently also don't go through tight doorways. That's really good. I'm gonna just get this sweet cube. It's basically a Rubik cube that's really easy to solve. All sides are the same, so you don't have to worry about like any effort being put into it. So hopefully person hasn't gone to lunch. They have. So this game has day-night cycles as well as uh, schedules for the NPCs. So part of the run is actually not only understanding not only understanding exactly where to go but when to do things because if NPCs move around or if you're slightly slow on a split or anything, you will need to reroute the game on the fly. So we just got the Rune of Humility. 
And then also some silk cloth was weaved for us. Need that. So here, I'm gonna do a cool sweet warp. It worked, okay. I was worried there for a second. So we set that warp up early in the game. By burying a moonstone, you can actually use it to warp uh, to that given location where you buried it. But only if you, uh, if the moon that is assigned to that warp gate is the current active moon, the highest moon on the horizon. There's two moons in the game. Oh, hey. I should be invisible. <laughs> or I will die. It's actually very hard running this without splits. I'm realizing. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I use the splits on these runs. I guess this is a run I just learned recently, too. And routed. Uh, let's see. We need to surrender. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to surrender to the gargoyles. So we've just surrendered to the gargoyles. So now they won't attack us. We have to do this as actual part of the main quest. It's not just so they won't attack us. Otherwise, we can't uh, get the broken limbs here to be fixed. So the entire plot of this game is actually that uh, that gargoyles and humans are fighting. They just learned of each other, and they hate each other. Very, they're all super racist against each other. And the actual plot of the game is you collecting enough stuff to read a book. And you can put together like the actual story from there. But we're actually just on a quest to read a book, not mend the racism in the world. We just accidentally do that along the way. We have a question in chat. Is the Skull of Mondain in this one? The Skull of Mondain is not in this one, unfortunately. The Skull of Mondain appears in Ultima 4. Uh, Mondain appears in this game. Which, so for anyone who doesn't know who Mondain is, they were the boss of Ultima 1. So before Ultima became Ultima... <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Before Ultima became a non-sort of uh, stereotypical RPG series... Wait. When it was more of a stereotypical RPG series, uh, the first game you actually fought a boss. You don't fight a boss in this game. Uh, but the first game had a boss called Mondane, the second game had a boss called Minix, and the third game had a boss called Exodus. All three of them exist in this game as just statues that you talk to. Uh, but the Skull of Mondane is an artifact from the very, very beginning. It's the skull of the boss you kill, and if you use it inside any area, it kills everything, but also makes the game uncompletable. Which is, you know, not something people want. Alright, let's try this again. There we go. We need a secret password to get past this part. You're supposed to learn the password through trial, like actual doing the trials in the game. Uh, talking to each of the said enemies that we just mentioned. However, we bypass that because we just know the password. We're um, omnipotent, apparently. Now we're going to cleanse each of the eight shrines. Where is Companion? Which is us just stealing a bunch of rocks and leaving all the gargles there. We don't bother fighting in the gargles, we just want the rocks. What else would we want? 
clearly we just want a bunch of stones. Basically we have to use a rune, a specific rune and a specific mantra at each of the shrines. I do have a $10 donation from Krogman420, $10 to Good Luck Squibs and Kill Lord British. Oh, hey. So this is a, a stone that lets us warp to 22 different locations. Uh, so you basically have to have the entire area memorized. It's based on where you place it on the ground versus where you're standing. Once you have it all memorized, you can just warp wherever you want all the time. Pretty sweet. Except for the human lens, and we have collected a lot of items. We got the broken lens, we had the gargles fix the broken lens to give us a purple lens, now we need a blue lens that takes two lenses to read. We actually apparently need a, a blue and a red lens to like beat this game, so I'm assuming that the book we're supposed to read is actually just in 3D and kind of blurry, and so you have to actually like find the blue and red lens, like the old 80s style. Really weirdly, really weird book. So now we have all the lenses we need, we have the rocks we need, we have this black cube we need. We can finally go into the final temple. I'm gonna put this this lens here, I'm put this lens here, and I'm gonna move all these rocks into the vortex cube. Turns out the Vortex Cube can store things, and it's supposed to store these rocks that we've been collecting. Moonstones. And when we put it right here, we can use it, and... There. <laughs> that is Ultima 6. <laughs> Turns out, everybody's mad at us. Lord British comes through, they're very mad at us. He says, that's that. Uh, Dallas didn't have just cause to burgle our codex, I trust, his majesty says, but for virtue's sakes, what hast thou done with it? We've come here, uh, and apparently they believe that, you know, for good reason probably that we've stole something. Uh, and then we just shove the blue lens into his hand as they stare at the wall. And then magically a big book appears. We've actually cast the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom into the Void. Two games ago, we drugged this out of the Void, and then we determine it's bad, so we throw it back into the Void. Uh, gargles come through. They're also really mad at us. Super mad. We do the same thing. We throw the lens in their hand, and then tell them to look at the book. And it turns out that the book says that humans and gargles should live in peace. And so they do. And that's the story. Please don't go to sleep yet. It's not a bedtime story. <laughs> Congratulations, thou hast completed it. And one day, we all need to report my feet to the Lord British. And we're about to actually see what happens next. Where did this go? We saved the world. Or something. <laughs> Nothing bad can possibly ever happen. Alright. I will switch over to the setup screen. 
Make sure I'm not behind on any messages. Oh, actually, 